I would like to use this video to talk about some of the finer points of Autodesk Fusion 360 joints. Let's start with finest center part of a board. When you're doing a joint, I want to do a revolve joint between the midpoint of this board. Well, you can zoom up on it if you want, and there it is, but I can't seem to get to it selected. So here's the trick. I like the board. Hold down the control key and select it very easily, even the far point. Let's try that again. So if I'm up here, I cannot select it. If I try my best, hold down the control key, it can easily select the center snap point. Now let's use the same technique on this big bore. Hover over it, hold down the control key, and pick the center point snap. That's how easy it is. Say OK. Now let's talk about attaching an arm like this to a point that is not on the center of this border on either end. If you'll notice that point right there, that's two inches from the end. I did that as a sketch in the model, as you can see right here. There's my work plane, and there's the point on that work plane, two inches from the end. So, going back to my assembly, let's go back and add another arm. Drag it in. Position it out of the way. And say OK. Now, let's go ahead and constrain it to that point. That's just a simple sketch point, but it can serve as an axe or a point for the joint. So I'll do another revolve. Again, my trick, hold down the tab key, excuse me, the control key to find the center, and then come over and pick on that point. So now that's exactly two inches from the end. How quick is that? Now, if you don't want to sketch a point, there's another way to do it. Let me undo that particular joint. I'm going to put it two inches in using the other method. Again, go to joint. I'm going to pick a revolve. Again, using my trick, I'm going to hold my control key down and pick that center point. Then I can simply pick on the center point of the end. And then at that point, pick the arrow and I can drag it in two inches. I have my snap set for eighth inch, so I can drag it right to the number I want, or I can type it in directly. It's easy as that. So that's another method of doing it. It's the same result, just using a typed in value. The next thing I want to talk about is joint limits, how to set them graphically. I'm going to go ahead and get undo that last entry and just put it back out there. I don't need it right now. I'm just going to use this one. I find the symbol and I just right click on it and I can go to joint limits. Now you can go into the table and do it. But as soon as you pick minimum, you can actually see two arrows show up. One is for the minimum. That's this one. I'm going to change it to minus 70. And the other arrow is the maximum. I'm going to change that to plus 70. And it fills it in automatically. So it's up to you. You can either type it or you can show it. Sometimes showing it is best so you can be sure that you're not hitting the limit. Now when you take and click on that joint, right click on it and say animate joint, it will go between those two limits. So I did that entirely graphically without coming over here, which you can do also. Now while we're here, I want to talk about another type of joint. Using Revolve, I need to put this bar between this clevis. Now that is going to be centered on the center pivot to the center of this. Now that's a different process. Let's go through it. Again, Revolve, we'll use our same trick up here. Hover, hold down control key and pick the center. Then come down here and what you want to do is you want to right click and pick between two faces. You want to pick on this face and then hover until you get the inside face on the other one. Now, the next thing you need to do is give it the reference. It doesn't matter. This circle, this circle, let's see if I can get this out of the way. Don't think I can. Yeah, there you go. Either this circle, that circle, or that circle. It doesn't matter. It's still going to be on the center. But you can't use this one unless it's dead center of that circle, but it's not. So I pick on that one and it goes right to the center. So remember, between two planes. The last thing I want to talk about is converting a joint to a different type without erasing it or deleting it. I'm going to go ahead and undo that, get rid of that last joint, and I'm going to place this arm back on the end point 
of this just to show you a little trick. So I'm going to go and do a joint. I'm going to pick cylindrical, which has both linear and rotational motion. I'm going to pick my center point again using my control key trick. I'm going to pick on the center of this. Now you notice it's revolving and rotating. Well, that's fine. What you can do is just say OK. And you can come over to your browser and expand that cylindrical joint. And you say, whoops, I really only want to revolve. Simply come in and change the distance, right click on it and lock it. That makes that a just like a revolve joint now. So you could lock either one you want, but in that case we've converted a cylindrical into a revolve. That can be also done on a few others, such as pin and pin and slot and planer. You can lock one motion. Hope you enjoyed this and hope it helped you in your joint work. Thank you.